Howdy folks, and welcome back to another video. Today I wanted to cover a topic that I really haven't seen talked about too much yet. And that is the question of, do new jammers have it too easy? And I know that sounds like a really weird question, and it is, but this crossed my mind recently when I posted a TikTok about the new Animal Jam tutorial in which you get to choose an animal and choose a pet and a den theme, where I was getting a lot of negative comments, yes, some of them were sarcastic, but many of them were genuine, about how they had to work really hard to get these pets, and new jammers were just getting them for free, and that wasn't fair. And at first I kind of brushed these comments off. I mean, I didn't understand it. I thought that everyone would be happy that new jammers have a better experience for the game, but I just kept getting more and more of these comments until almost my entire comment section was just people complaining and lamenting about the fact that they didn't get this when they were new jammers and it was unfair that new jammers did get this because they didn't. And that made me question, why do so many people feel this way? So I looked a little into it and I kind of came to the realization that I had heard the same argument before, I just hadn't seen it in such large numbers. Like for example, back in 2021, where animals like the fox and panda became purchasable for gems instead of sapphires. There was a lot of uproar and people who were upset about it. And there were people who were saying that it was unfair that new jammers could just get these pets for basically free when they had to work really hard to get them. But the problem was that so much of the focus was instead on the sapphires itself and the fact that people wanted refunds that I never really noticed the people who were angry not at the new jammers, but at the idea that new jammers could have it so easy. That just flew under my radar. But they were there. And then again, that argument came back up when Animal Jam hosted a contest on Instagram where you'd be voting for an old animal to be brought back to the game. And honestly, a lot of the negative comments were out flooded by the positive comments excited for the animal to get brought back, but there were still comments there who were upset that they purchased this animal a long time ago and so it had a perceived rarity and that rarity for said animal would be stripped away. And we saw this again really recently with the introduction of the Fab Five animal token, where a bunch of old animals were brought back in store via the super box, where people were upset not only about the fact that these animals were now purchasable with real money, which is a whole conversation on its own that I've already had. Go check out my video on if Animal Jam is greedy or not. Anyway, people were upset not just that these were purchasable for real money, but they were also upset because the raccoon, for example, was considered a really rare animal because it hadn't been in stores for a really long time and looked really good, so people really wanted it and so it was considered rare. Now, a lot of this confuses me, especially the concept that bringing old animals back is bad or unfair to old jammers who purchased it when they first came. Because, for one, it's not like you can trade animals, so what makes an animal rare? The real answer is nothing. There's no such thing as a rare animal. You can't trade them, so it's only ever going to stay on your account. So the only thing rare about it is the fact that you had to be around for a long time to get it. So it's less of a actual lessering of value thing and more of a people can't flex anymore thing. Which I understand, and I'm not going to say that I'm completely above flexing. I mean, have you seen my fit? Tons of your items on there. I enjoy showing off that I have these items that I worked really hard for, so it does understand that people would like showing off things that not a lot of other people have as well. But there are a lot of ways you can do that without using an animal that hasn't been around for a long time, and so an animal being re-released doesn't make your look unfair and doesn't mean that you can't flex. It might mean that you have to go out and get new items that are rare and that might take you a long time to get, but isn't it worth the effort? Well, sure. A lot of people enjoy trading, a lot of people don't, and people have the right to get upset over whatever they want. But I just kind of thought that that part in particular was kind of funny, that people just wanted to flex over an older animal and were upset that they were brought back so that they couldn't really flex over it anymore. But I saw enough of comments and videos about that um, that I just wanted to put that in this whole thing. And so the second part, um, the part about the animals being brought back for gems instead of sapphires back in 2021, Honestly, when that first happened, I was upset too. I had purchased multiple foxes and at least one panda, and so when they were purchasable for gems, I was with the crowd who wanted refunds and who were upset because I had spent hundreds of sapphires that I wasn't going to get back. 
But honestly, I kind of got over it. I mean, yeah, I would 100% love to get some free sapphires and a refund, but I came to the realization that I am just happy that new players can have more fun in different experiences in the game, even if I didn't get to have that when I was a new jammer. I mean, if you really think about it, the reason that Animal Jam is making it easier to be a new jammer or a guest jammer is because they want to retain an audience. If you haven't noticed, over the last couple years, Animal Jam has been declining in popularity. Yes, there was a spike recently in player activity, but the trend has generally been downwards. So, what, th what are they going to do? They're going to make quality of life updates so that new players have a better experience and feel more reason to play the game more often. That's like the new tab that shows up on the right hand of your screen when you first log into account, where it gives you options of what to do next. Do you want to dig up fossils? Do you want to go fight phantoms? They're giving you ideas of what is capable in the game because previously it was a little bit difficult to find everything. You couldn't go to the phantom dimension without owning a phantom portal, and a lot of people didn't even know that was a thing that you could do. And it was really confusing for a lot of people. All of the time during phantom drop potions, I would see players asking, how are you doing that? Where do you get these from? And so it's giving players direction, motivation, and just enjoyment to make them play longer and stay with the game, which is, in my opinion, a good thing. I'm happy to see more people enjoying it. Which is entirely why not only are they bringing back, you know, old animals and why they made some animals for gems, but that's also why they did things like the free membership promotion and why they are now giving every new account a free pet, which is what the main argument was about because that's the most fresh and recent one was people saying that it's unfair that players get a free pet. Well, for one, we're talking about lab dogs and tabby kitties and they're in shops 24-7 all year round. And only for 50 sapphires. And 50 sapphires is the kind of number that I can't defend and say, well, that might be a lot of sapphires for some people. This day and age, it's really not. You get sapphires every Wednesday from the Daily Spin. You can get sapphires from digging shovels. You can get sapphires from nocturnal animals. You can get sapphires from pretty much anything. And 50 sapphires really isn't that much. And, and so I really think that out of all of these arguments, this one's definitely... The strangest one to get upset over it's just 50 sapphires and i mean y'all got upset upset enough that the update that followed this change in tutorial they added a feature where every single account can get a free pet if you just log in five days and that kind of rectified the situation but still people were arguing and upset about it and some people still are upset about it because technically because every account gets a free pet if you log in five days and accounts that are brand new get another free pet if you create an account. So technically people are still going to be upset because brand new accounts get two free pets and pre-existing accounts get one. But it's not that big of a deal. It's 50 sapphires. And additionally, it's not even like these pets can be traded, so it's not giving them like a heads up in the trading system. So just generally, it's a lot less than people are making it out to be. So like, in conclusion, yes, Animal Jam is certainly a lot easier to start out. It's more clear and concise on where you can go and what you can do, and they do give new players a lot more than they gave old players who just started out. But that isn't necessarily a bad thing, it's to keep player attention, and I would say that it's generally a positive change. But y'all let me know in the comments what you think. Do you think that this catering towards a newer audience is a good thing? Do you think it's a bad thing? Are you upset that new accounts get a free pet? I'd love to hear your input. But really, that's all I have to say for now. Thank you all for watching. I'll be uploading a video sometime soon. And I'll see you all around.